Hi, everybody. This is Wednesday, December 23rd. On Monday night, a private spaceflight company, SpaceX, launched its Falcon 9 rocket on a mission to deploy a satellite in space. And what you're seeing here is not the launch. Uh, SpaceX then detached the second stage of the rocket, which went on to deploy the satellites, and it brought the first stage of the rocket back to an upright landing in Florida. So SpaceX has been trying to accomplish this for some time. They uh, were at first trying to land their rockets on an ocean-going platform, and they got closer and closer at doing that, but never quite accomplished it on those ocean platforms. But here they have now accomplished an upright landing of a rocket on the ground. And the reason this is such big news is that these rockets are expensive. So being able to do this should cut the cost of spaceflight dramatically. Um, another company, another private spaceflight company called Blue Origin, which is owned by Jeff Bezos, who founded Amazon.com, uh, also landed a rocket upright about a month ago. But that rocket had not gone on a mission to space. That rocket had gone just to suborbital space. So congratulations to everybody at SpaceX for this amazing accomplishment. It's fantastic. Elon Musk, who is the founder of SpaceX, told reporters after, uh, afterwards that the rocket actually landed just six miles from where it had launched, just minutes after the launch, and that it landed dead center, almost dead center, on the target. This is an amazing image. This is not an artist's impression. This is a real image of the disk around a supermassive black hole at the center of a galaxy. So you can see the galaxy in the background here. Uh, the galaxy is M87. It's about 47, or not 87, I'm sorry, M77. It's about 47 million light years away. And uh, the inset, the pulled out part, is the disk around the supermassive black hole at the center of that galaxy. So NASA was able to obtain this image uh, with the X-ray vision of its new star space observatory. Um, astronomers have been theorizing for decades about the disks around black holes, and uh, you, they sometimes call them the torus around a black hole or a donut. They often describe it as a donut shape. And in many, many, many artists' impressions, they've shown this torus or donut or disk around the black hole as being smooth. But what's so cool about this image is that you can see that it's not smooth. In fact, it's clumpy. Here's another piece of news about black holes. This is an artist's impression, <clears throat> excuse me, of a black hole. Um, the black hole is that dark thing in the center. This artist has drawn in a jet coming from the black hole and the orange part is the disc again around the black hole. Uh, this news is theoretical work about black holes. It comes from the University of Leicester in England. And uh, these astronomers explored this region around the black hole, this disc shown here in orange in this artist's impression. And what they wanted to find out was how big can a supermassive black hole get? So they commented that at a certain amount of mass, this disk would crumble into stars. So instead of this disk being there, there would be stars forming. And the disk is what feeds the black hole. So they kept coming up with the number 50 billion solar masses as the uh, size that where the, the disk would start to form stars rather than to continue to feed the black hole. So they're saying that's the cutoff for the size that a black hole can get, 50 billion times as massive as our sun. And what's so cool about that is that astronomers have already found black holes that are about 40 billion solar masses. And so what that means is that we may have already found uh, some of the most massive black holes that are possible in the universe. If you've been watching the moon, you know that there, uh, the moon has been waxing. There's a full moon coming up on Christmas Day, December 25th. And this is actually, for the Western Hemisphere at least, this is the first full moon on Christmas Day since 1977. So um, <clears throat> we had a full moon on Christmas in 1977, 38 years ago. Um, in space, nothing is random. Everything is cycles. And there is a 19-year cycle of the moon whereby the moon comes back to the same exact phase on the same calendar date every 19 years. So 19 years ago, it was 1996. 
So why didn't we have a full moon on Christmas that day? Um, in fact, Asia did have a full moon on Christmas that day, but we in the Western Hemisphere had our full moon in 1996 on Christmas Eve. So um, the exact time of the full moon lasts only an instant. It's when the moon is most opposite the sun for that month. And this year, that instant occurs on Christmas Day. So what does it mean? It doesn't really mean anything, except that if you're 38 years old and you live in this hemisphere, you've never had a full moon on Christmas Day. So be sure and enjoy this one. And uh, by the way, SLU has a very cool event coming up on Christmas Eve uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You can tune in to SLU.com and look for a glimpse of Santa near this full moon. Here's our image of the week. This is from Jose Luis, Luis Gomez in Spain. And what's going on in this image? Uh, this, he had, Jose had his camera pointed toward the eastern pre-dawn sky, very low in the eastern pre-dawn sky. You can see that this is a twilight sky and he's captured a bunch of faint stars in the twilight sky. But now look in the lower left of the image and you'll see the word Saturn. So yes, Saturn is just now coming back to the eastern sky before dawn. It's joining three other bright planets that are already there, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter. So Saturn will be the fourth bright planet in the eastern pre-dawn sky. There's only one other bright planet, and that's the planet Mercury. It's in the evening sky, <clears throat> excuse me, right now. But Mercury will also be moving over into the morning sky by the end of January. And when it does that, there's going to be all five of the bright planets, the visible planets, the planets that are easily visible to the eye, are going to be together in the pre-dawn sky. So that hasn't happened since 2006, being able to see all five planets simultaneously. So end of January, mark your calendar for that. If you'd like to submit your image to earthsky.org, um, you can come and hit the Submit Images button on any page at our website. Uh, thank you, Jose. Thanks for joining me today. This is Deborah Bird.